Take it away, homie. It is all you. All right, cool. So uh, what I'm going to do, when, when I was here for the John Company stream, uh, we did a like kind of a running start, and we just sort of ran right into the game, which is the way I tend to prefer to teach right. uh, a lot of the games I've worked on. With this one, we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to give a very full explanation. What? I'm you gonna threw me all off. I know. I'm going to work so workshop some concepts. We're going to talk a little strategy, and then we're wow. going to get into it. Yeah. Wow. So we're, I'm, wow. Mix I'm mixing it up. Who are you, and what have you done with Cole Worley, <laughs> Mr. I'm going to do a running teach? Well, I still like to do this game as a running teach, and right, after, right before we start, I'll make a couple comments about how I'd teach it if we were doing a running teach. Okay. So, a couple quick notes about the production. So, what you see here is very, very close to final. Uh, the one change on the mat is like we move these symbols up so you can put these on directly without covering the name. Okay. Small stuff. Um, the other thing is these blocks have a wash on them. The real blocks won't have a wash, but they're going to be the same sort of stony resin material. Um, and then the coins, there are, you'll see the coins actually have a bunch of different washes. There you go. Uh, that's because in order to have enough coins for this play, I wanted to, I just used all of the samples that were given me. So wait, uh, which of the three is it going to be, I do you know? I think I picked this, this one, one. All right. I'm not 100% <laughs> well, sure. But you know what, they all look good, so whatever. Uh, and then lastly, um, these uh, die cuts for the dials, um, and if you, Edward, if you want oh, to click yeah, on the sure. tableau. Yep. So this one right here, you'll see it has a sort of um, uh, a rivet in it, so that you can spin it. Um, the other ones that we have are unriveted because of the way they manufacture these. So just know that like they will all spin. So technically this is not riveting. Right, it's not riveting. Not yet. Okay, but, so, but that's what they will look like with... Right. There you go. All right, but cool. outside Easy. of that, we're pretty much at the... Production. Yeah, the, the production copy. Good deal. Okay, cool. So um, a quick background on the game. So this is a game about Afghanistan in the 1820s. Uh, and because maybe you didn't learn about it in high school history class, I'm going to give you like a tiny little capsule version. Uh, basically, for most of the 18th century, one empire kind of lorded over Central Asia. And that empire fell apart completely in the early part of the 19th century. And we are playing different Afghan political factions that are trying to cobble together something like what would become the modern Afghan state. So in order to do that, we're going to court the influence of uh, imperial powers or nativist elements in the country. And we're going to try to build a coalition that can rule that can rule the country, or we're going to position ourselves to profit off the chaos and sort of keep things fragmented enough. Uh, this game has victory points, um, and at the end of the fourth scoring round, the person with the most victory points will win. The other condition is that if you ever get four points ahead of all the other players, you just instantly win. <laughs> so if you miss the instant, so there's still, there are victory points, but there's still instant uh, vin uh, victory conditions, and they still matter a lot. Uh, I think it's really funny that this goes all the way up to 23. It's, it's the theoretical highest score I've never seen in a game. <laughs> but I, you know, it also just nicely mapped out. Okay. Um, so a couple other general notes about the pieces, and then I'll get to the structure of the rules. Uh, so in terms of the setup, or actually here, I'll talk about some anatomy, anatomy then we'll do setup. So in terms of the anatomy, uh, as you can see, there is this big market of cards. Most of the game is going to be about acquiring these cards and then adding them on to your tableaus. Okay. Um, and usually you keep your tableau kind of in front of your uh, line, and that should look fine with how we have it set up here. It'd be um, like so, but yes. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, so these cards power most of the game. Um, now, uh, every card has a number of features, and Edward, if you want to click it on that uh, camera, I'll just run through them very quickly. So in the top left of each card, you have the suit, um, cards also feature a rank, which is indicated by the number of stars. Uh, on the right of the card is listed its uh, location, the, the, the region where the card uh, sort of takes place. And then beneath it are the impact icons, which is when the card is played, that's what it's going to do to the game. Usually, this involves adding a number of units to play. Um, beneath the card, you've got the card's name, uh, and then some, some text. It'll tell you about the different characters and places in the game. So everything in italics is flavor. Is flavor right? text. Okay. So you can, you know, for those of you who don't care, you can ignore it, and I won't be too hurt. Um, <laughs> too and hurt. Then in the little boxes, uh, those illustrated icons are actions. So in this game, you have you always have access to a couple basic actions, but then as you draft your tableau, you'll get additional actions kind of added on. Um, and then some cards at the bottom of the card, and I'll just show you an example of this one. 
Uh, you'll see that there's that little uh, stripe. That's called a loyalty prize. We'll talk about those a little bit later. And then some other cards have a stripe on the name, uh, and those cards are called Patriots. They're cards with strong opinions. So I'm running through all this pretty quickly, and I'll be touching on all the different elements of card anatomy a little later, but I wanted to give an overall geography right now. Cool. Um, all right, sweet. So um, now let's talk about pieces. So here we've got our board. It's divided into six regions. Uh, the Punjab is kind of a region of northern India and pa modern-day Pakistan. Transcaspia, the uh, Caspian Sea, is sort of right off here on the edge. Uh, and then, of course, we have Persia, and then the modern state of Afghanistan is kind of these three middle regions, uh, which, you know, just to put everybody on the same page. Um, you have, there are basically two different kinds of peace in the game. Uh, one are, these are co uh, coalition blocks, and if they're standing upright, they're an army. Uh, and they march around and they destroy pieces. And if you put them on their side, they're a road. Uh, and armies use roads to march around. Both of these pieces are kind of owned communally. So this is a political game, but it's also a game that's really informed by sort of traditional shareholding games. Basically, to put it in train game terms, because I know you all like 18xx, there are three companies in Pax Premier. Uh, there is a coalition affiliated with the Brits, a coalition affiliated with the Russians, and then a coalition that is just nativist. But, you know, anybody can lay the track, right? And then you have to fight over who gets to run the trains. Um, okay, so those are those blocks. Now, you also have these ruler tokens. When a player takes control of a region, they're going to take this token and bring it, you know, they'll, they'll put it on their tableau, put it on Edward's tableau over there. There you go. Uh, so. so they can see that, you know, he's, he's a ruler of that region. Being a ruler provides you with certain benefits. Again, this is stuff I'm going to talk about later when we get to the specific actions. But just know that it is possible to rule the different regions right now. Uh, the last piece is the cylinder, which, if it's on the board, is called a tribe. It's a unit of personal political authority. And then if you have them on one of your tableau cards, let's say if I have a tribe, if I have a cylinder over on Edward's card. Which then, could happen, right? Which, yeah. which could happen. Then that cylinder is considered a spy. Um, spies will, can move around the board and exact all sorts of ruin. Uh, but just know that basically the main pieces in this game are all dual purpose. So a cylinder could be a spy or it could be a tribe depending on its location. Uh, and a block could be an army or it could be a road. Um, Things don't change, like a spy is a spy is a spy in the game, but when it goes from a stock, it kind of like will take a form. Okay. All right. Uh, cool. So that's a general overview of everything. Um, we've got these coins too. Uh, one thing to note about the coins in the game is the game is a largely closed economy. These basically represent your followers. These are the people who really like you. And when you do things, they'll get a little mad, and then other players might be able to pick them up. But because the game is mostly, mostly operates in a closed economy, if one person is rich, everyone else is poor, and you just have to deal with it. Um, <laughs> lastly, we have, I've said lastly like 30 times here. It, it's um, all good. They're so, used to it from me. You're fine. Don't so uh, we've got this little marker, that minaret, uh, which is marks the favored suit. There's always one suit that's favored. Uh, the nice thing about the favored suit is it makes certain actions for free. Uh, it makes certain actions count as bonus actions. So if you have a tableau that has many, uh, let's say, political cards on it, if the political suit is favored, then you uh, are able to use those cards without draining the rest of your action potential. Okay, that is a bird's eye view. Um, oh, one thing relating to, there's always another thing, relating to loyalty. You can only ever be loyalty to one thing. So Edward, if you want to click it over here. Uh, Edward is currently loyal to the British. If he were to change his loyalty, he would rotate that dial. You can only ever be loyal in one thing. Uh, now, what we do in, in this iteration, in, in the second edition of Premier, is that loyalty dial uh, is going to be able to hold pieces. So if you set that down and put some cylinders on it, as you know, Edward develops his influence in the Russian coalition, he can put you know, cylinders on that piece, essentially like buying shares of the Russian company. But you can't have a diverse portfolio. So if Edward ever changes his loyalty, any influence that he's been able to gather is lost. And that's very, very, very important. And it comes back onto your tableau like so, right? Yep. yep. All right. There we okay. Go. Uh, all right. That's all the components. So the game itself is a pretty straightforward tableau builder. And in fact, in a lot of ways, uh, the rules for this are much, much simpler than any of the other PAX games. I'm talking maybe a third. Uh, if you just were to look, look at the word count of the rule book, this is about a third as complicated as PAX Perfuriana. 
Don't worry, it makes up for it in other ways. Um, <laughs> but it, because it, it can be a bit of a head scratcher. But in terms of the overhead, the, the, the core of the game is mechanically simple. In fact, uh, here, hand me one of those plays. Um, almost every rule that you need is on the single page play aid. And uh, this isn't a challenge to Jack, but it's a little bit of a challenge to Jack because I uh, doubt a better play can be made <laughs> um, for, for this particular game. So prove me wrong. Um, so, but the, the core of the game is pretty straightforward. Real quick, before we go any further, uh, plus the Cole can take a drink this way. For those that don't know, Drew Worley, who's in chat right now, that's that's Drew. Hi, mm -hmm. Drew. That's Cole's brother, and he helped design, develop? Yep, he helped develop the game. Uh, Drew's worked on all the games that I've ever done. Um, he is a great voice that tells me that things are too complicated and I should, you know, focus on the drama, all that good stuff. And he had a big role in the development of this. All right, cool. And Jack says he's offended. All right, so there you go, Cole. All right. Go, go uh, all right, to excellent. All right, so um, what I'm going to do in terms of the, the rules explanation, I'm going to divide it into three parts. I'm going to talk very quickly about how setup works because it's not super complicated, but I just want everyone to be aware of how it works, and then I'm going to talk about victory. What? Okay. You're good, you're good. The cameras are off, you're fine. Go ahead. Okay, well, I, I like looking at the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk about victory. So set up, and then I'm gonna talk about victory, and then after we're done talking about victory, I will work through the structure of a turn, and then from there, everything else is gonna kind of flow. Cool. So, in terms of setup, game starts with the board totally empty outside of these ruler tokens. Um, every player will have all of their player cylinders arrayed on their sheet and everybody gets four rupees. Um, the last part of setup involves the setting of the loyalty dial, which I will do after we have gone through the entire rules explanation. Um, finally, you have to build the deck. So the way the deck is built is there are six piles uh, and the bottom four piles have score checking cards called dominance checks in them. And then uh, events are kind of sprinkled through the deck. And you build six piles, you shuffle them individually, then you make the big stack. It's the longest part of the setup. It takes about three minutes. Um, and that's it for the setup. Everybody starts with zero points. Once you create the deck, you sort of deal the initial flop. Where did you pull those cards from? Uh, the top of the deck. Okay, cool. Shuffle them up, put them back at the top okay. of the deck. Okay, yes, sir. Because we're all done with them for now. Okay, done. Um, all right. So... They, they might come back, but we're not going to worry about it quite yet. No worries. All right, so uh, that's set up. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, usually at the end of a game, too, you can very easily gather the cards and play with the same deck that you played with previously if you want. Now, like Perfuriana, this game has a really, really large card list. We're using, f this is a five-player game, so the about, about as many cards as we could use in a single game are being used right now, and there's about... Um, between a third and half of the cards are, be, are unused right now. So oh, nice. you're only seeing a small fraction in a three or four player game, you're only playing with half of the cards or less. Okay, so what do you do on a turn? Oh, so we'll do victory first. All right, so as I said, you win the game if you can ever have four more points than any other player at the end of a scoring round. So if you can, if you can make that happen by the end of a round, you just cold win the game. Good for you. Um, outside of that, uh, whenever a scoring card comes out called a dominance check, we're going to score the board state. Now, the basic thing we're looking for, kind of the magic number is four. So if a single coalition, let's say there are four British armies in Kabul, if a single coalition has four armies more than all other coalitions to take in individually, that coalition is considered dominant. So people who have shares in the British coalition, it pays out. The person with the most shares gets five points, second most gets three, third most gets one. Um, the ties are somewhat generous in this game. Those people are going to add up those points, divide among themselves. Okay. Keep going. Cool. Uh, now, if that doesn't happen, uh, so this is another instance where like they are dominant, but let's say at the very last moment we get some more Russian guys in the mix, and this is what the condition is at the end. Uh, so in this case, no coalition is dominant, and instead the score will be based solely on how many cylinders people have in play. So if you kick it back to the Tableau camera, and you knock off three or four of those cylinders. If Edward has four cylinders in play at that point, they could be tribes, they could be spies, and if that's more than any other player, he's gonna get three points. The person in second place is only gonna get one point, and the rest doesn't matter. Uh, then, after we do that check, um, if a coalition was successful, we're gonna wipe the board. All of the uh, blocks are gonna come back to the block supply. Cylinders stay out, people's tableaus stay out, but the blocks get wiped. If it was unsuccessful, 
the board stays as is. So in short, basically, if a single coalition is able to put things together, there's a brief period of peace, everybody demilitarizes, the board pacifies, and you have to kind of rebuild. But if no co coalition was successful, people stay armed, and you have to sort of navigate through the next part without the board getting a soft reset. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yep. Cool. Okay. All right, excellent. And again, all this stuff um, is going to be found on that plate. I've just kind of worked through the top third of the plate. All right. So now, actually, is the easy point. If you if you get victory in this game, you are well over the hill in terms of the difficulty of the rules. Uh, in terms of actually playing it, um, don't at? worry about it. Okay, you, you can. Drew, do... Drew's handle in chat. Excellent. Good for Drew. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in terms of the actual play of the game, on your turn you get two actions. You don't have to take any actions if you don't want. You could take one and stop. I don't care. You're probably not going to win. Um, but you can take up to two actions. Now you always have action, access to two actions. Uh, those uh, two different types of actions. The first action is called purchase, and the second action is called play, and they do just what they say. So we'll start with the purchase action because it's pretty straightforward. To purchase, you buy one of the cards in the market. Uh, the cards have costs listed here, so that's a z this is the zero column, and then one, two, three, four, and five. When you buy a card, you pay its price to previous cards in the market. So if you wanted to buy this card, you'd pay one coin here, one coin here, and then you would purchase that card. This card costs two, those rupees are placed there. Now, later on, um, I, if I put a rupee on a card, I can't buy it. So it's, I, have, I have disqualified myself from buying this card for this particular turn. Now let's say another turn goes by, market moves down, etc., and I, someone buys this card. If they buy it, this card would cost one, so one would be paid here, and then this card would be gained, and the player buying it gets any rupees that were on that card. And at that point, you can buy it, correct? Correct, if, if, if a turn has gone by. Okay. Um, now, I, you can't use the money that you would gain from a card to like backwards pay. You have to have the money up front to do the paying. And that's the purchase action. That's all there is to it. Um, there is a hand limit in the game, but it's not checked till the end of your turn. You can go over it if you want to. If you want to just sort of buy buy cards uh, without thinking about what you might have to discard. Uh, okay, so that's that's purchasing. Um, as you can see, these cards over here cost five. Uh, now, in some cases, military suit the military suit might become favored. When the military suit is favored, the market costs are doubled which means that when you pay to each card, you'll need to pay two rupees instead of one. So this card goes from costing three to costing six. And where would the money go? It just case? sits on the card in little stacks. Uh, all right, so that's the purchase action. Uh, the second action is play. Uh, of all the actions in this game, uh, this is the most complicated. And sort of looking at the play chart that Edward has, all of those icons, those impact icons, are what happens when the play action takes place. Uh, so it the play action has the most stuff embedded in it, uh, and but it, it's pretty straightforward. So basically, what happens is, and I'll hand you a card, Edward, to kind of take you through this. Let's okay. start with an easy one. Okay. So let's say there. Edward wants to play uh, the Afghan handicrafts card. I want to play that card. You do. So the first thing you have to do is look at the location of the card. That, it is Kabul. Yep. So we look we look at Kabul and we or say, Kabul. oh, you can say either one. Okay. Um, and this is a 19th century game, so no one really knows how. <laughs> so you look to see, is, is the ruler token in Kabul? Now, it is. It is. So that means nobody rules Kabul, which means you don't need to pay anybody. But if I ruled Kabul, and I'll, I'll talk about the conditions for rule later. If I ruled Kabul, uh, Edward would need to pay me a rupee for each tribe that I have. And so he'd need to pay me one. So I'd take your rupee and I would add it to my coffers. Now... If I don't, he doesn't have to, rather, I can excuse him that cost. So there might be a reason why we might want to work together, and I could say, look, normally you might need to pay me three, but for this case, just pay me one, or I don't want to pay you at all. We can make deals like, I don't pay me for Kabul, but I don't want to pay you for Persia. All that stuff is fine, but you can't make any binding agreements, and you can't ever trade money or cards directly in this game. It's not John Company. Uh, okay, <laughs> so, if, but let's assume nobody rules Kabul. Okay, nobody rules. Nobody Kabul. rules Cobble. So if that happens, Edward sort of meets the first condition of playing a card. So the first thing is, are you allowed to play it? Do you have the political resources you need to make this Afghan Handicrafts card happen? Okay. Um, okay, so now let's take a look at the Afghan Handicrafts card. So it has one impact icon, which you can see right below Cobble, and it is a sideways block or a road. 
So Edward would put one road in Kabul. Now, he would have to refer to his loyalty, so go ahead and look at your loyalty disc. So Edward's loyal to the British, he would take one of those blocks, and he could put it on any border bordering Kabul. Now, like Root, this game has really um, dense locations. You can have lots of different players in the same location. You, you, there's no stacking limit. So it's possible that you know the Brits have four roads and the Russians also have a road like on, on the Punjab. That is a completely legal thing and sometimes happens. So Edward plays the Afghan Handicrafts card. He has to resolve all of the impact icons. Now that card only has one impact icon. Let's compare it with one of these. So this card is in Punjab, so you would do the same rulership check, and it would allow you to put two armies, those upright blocks, in Punjab. They would have to be British armies. Now the last icon you see there is the little sort of little burst symbol with, with the political suit on that. That will change the favored suit. So over here you see the favored suit marker. Let's say it was down here. When Edward plays um, Hari Singh, he would move him up to the political oh, sorry. favored yep, suit. One, one. Yep. And, and it shows it right yep, there. And it there shifts you the moment you play that card. Now that could mean that later in this turn you might get different bonus actions. That kind of happens instantly. Okay, so going through the other, uh, the other impact icons. So this one, let's see, I'm trying to think about one that crosses off a lot of different ones at once. Here we go. Yeah. So here's another guy in Punjab. Um, we'll just go through a few of these. Those two are cylinders with little crowns on them. As you might guess, they place tribes. So you put the tribe in the region. Um, now, one thing about tribes is tribes allow you to come to rule places. So it, the conditions for ruling is you have to have the most pieces and at least one tribe. So right now in Punjab, and we're only counting tribes and armies, you don't need to worry about robes, roads. So right now in Punjab, there are only two full pieces there. They're both Edwards, so Edward would take the ruling mm -hmm. token. Now, armies count for whoever's loyal to them. So for example, if Punjab had two Russian armies in it, Edward doesn't have the most pieces. Because nope. yellow isn't pink. Yep. Uh, and, and at this point, like no one, essentially no one would rule the Punjab. Um, now, if Edward could get a single British army there, he would then have three pieces. Everybody else would have two, so he would then take the rulership token. Uh, being a ruler has lots of benefits, uh, but in order to do it, you need need tribes. Uh, okay, there are two more impact icons. Um, one of them is the spy icon. So the spy icon allows you to put one cylinder on any card in Kandahar. Could be that card, could be a card on another player's tableau. Um, so just, yeah, for example, if it were here, uh, Edward could play that card, and instead of putting the spy there, he could put a spy directly on my piece. And that's totally okay for now. As long, it just has to have the same location. Just has, to have, the the same, just has to have the same location. Uh, okay, uh, the last icon, I'm going to just see if I can fish one out real fast. <laughs> Promise I'm not cheating, too bad. Uh, towards the top, there was one in one of the groups that I have, okay. the cards. Yeah, here it is. The scales. There Boom, the scales. Okay, the, the last icon is the leveraged icon, uh, which is a scale with two little... Uh, coin symbols on it. Right there. When you play a card with the leveraged icon, you get to take two coins from the little money jar. Over there. Uh, and that is money that is added into the game. But if you ever lose that card, you have to pay the money back. And for each dollar or for each rupee that you can't pay, you need to lose a card from your hand or your tableau. It hurts. Martin Wallace loans? I know. <laughs> loans hurt. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, so that's almost all the things about the play action. The last thing that matters is sometimes you will play cards, like if you go back to your tableau. I'm really getting, uh, getting Edward to work out here. No, it's all good. Um, so the last thing is you'll see that William Hay McNaughton is a patriot. Now, if you play a patriot, so let's say this is what Edward's tableau looks like. If and you, Patriot because of the pink band in it right here. Yep. Okay. If you pay, play a Patriot of a different loyalty, it forces a loyalty change. So any Patriot who disagrees with you is going to peace out, and you have to spin your dial. 
Uh, now here, I'm just going to say a quick word about what counts for influence. And I'll do this because the contrast is a little bit better on the yellow. There you go. Um, so influence points, basically whenever you see an animal icon, it's one influence point plus your diamonds. So you get, in this case, Edward would have uh, one influence point for having the dial turned to Russian and a second in influence point for his patriot. If he had a gift, he would have three influence points, etc. Make sense? All right, cool. So those are the two basic actions. Um, purchase, again, very straightforward. Play, you're mostly playing a card down and then you're just looking at what the icons do and doing them. And there aren't many icons and most of them are put the piece that you see in the place where the card says. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, okay, the other element of the game that requires a little bit of explanation, and this is where normally if I were doing a straight like teach through, if we were at a con or I were demoing it, we would just start playing. But because I want to do put all the rules up front, I'm going to talk through all the different special actions. So on your turn, you get two actions. And you can choose to purchase or play. Those are like your, that's your menu of actions. You could purchase twice. If you have two cards in your hand, you could play twice. Um, the special actions can, they sort of take an action point to do uh, instead of the kind of basic actions you always have uh, at your disposal. Okay, so I actually, before we talk about them, I wanna say just a quick word about the structure of a turn. So on your turn, you do two things, and then at the end, you do a cleanup. This market is gonna slide over, new cards are gonna get drawn. If you are over hand size, you have to discard cards, and if you are over tableau size, you have to discard cards. So both of those things uh, you can see reminders of in your uh, tableau. And the hand size is two plus the number of blue stars that you have on your court. So Edward in this case would have a hand size of four that he could hold from turn to turn. Court size is three plus the number of political stars, purple stars. Again, you can grow above that court size. It's just at the end of your turn, you've got to bring it back within. And when I say court, Court and tableau are synonymous in this So game. right now I'm allowed five cards laid out on my tableau out here, and I'm allowed at the end of my turn to have four cards in my hand. Right, that's ex that. it exactly. Okay. Okay, cool. So, and then at the end of your turn, you just sort of perform the cleanup, all the stuff goes down. Um, as you're filling the market, one th quick thing about cleanup, uh, certain cards are events, they will look different, and that's the one element of the game that I will wait till they show up to talk about. Makes Events sense. fall off the market in the zero column, so you have to clean them up. And then the dominance cards, which are scary looking events that are bright red, if you reveal a dominance check and there's another dominance check out, it instantly triggers. Which one triggers? The Both of them. They kind of cancel each other out. Thank you, Edward. Edward just saved me a BGG comment in like three months. So You're good. You're good. <laughs> Team player. Team player, Cole. Uh, okay. So let's talk about the special actions. Uh, so the special actions fall into a few categories. If you want to show the bottom half. Yes, sir. There you right go. Right here. All right. So uh, there are the special actions. So the special actions fall into a few groups. Um, as you can see, some of their explanations are really, really simple, like a single sentence simple. Um, so I'm going to start by talk. We're, we're going to kind of work. Ah, let's just work in order. Why not? Yeah, why not? Um, okay. So the build action. Uh, the build action, which is the little castle, if you take the build action, you need to rule somewhere. And you can spend two, four, or six rupees to build one, two, or three blocks in locations you rule. So these could be roads, these could be armies, it doesn't matter. Uh, when you spend money on actions, you have to pay that money to the market. So if you take it over to the overview, if I spend four on an action, so this is different from purchasing. You always pay from the opposite side of the market one rupee per card. So this is me spending four to take a build action. When you say opposite end of the market or I mean, opposite. Sure, I'm right. talking about the high side of the market. So when okay. you purchase, you're playing your money over here. When you're spending to take an action, you're gonna put your money over there. And now, does it matter if you start top to bottom, bottom to top? The numbers are always even. Okay. Uh, so it, it, it won't matter. now. How do you know which side you pay? Well, if the cost you're paying is listed on an action icon, you just, you're gonna be paying to the right side of the market, to the more expensive side. Okay, so the build action allows you to build units. So if I ruled, let's say the Transcaspian, and I spent this four, and I'm loyal to the Afghans, I could build two blocks, so it's <laughs> one block for every two spent in Transcaspian. I could build an army and a road, 
I can build two armies, two roads, you know, anything you'd like. If I ruled two different locations, I could build one in Persia, one in Transcaspia, that's all fine. And define ruling again? Ruling is having the most pieces in at least one tribe. And you show ruling by? Taking one of those nice little wooden tokens. And if um, somebody else owns it, you take it from them? Yep. Okay. Okay, so that is the build action in a nutshell. It's like Edward's done this before. I know. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to save you questions no, later I, I on, okay? That. All right. And we're making, so there, we're making Drew's job easy. All right, there's the build action. There's the build action. Okay, the tax action. Uh, the tax action allows you to take money. Uh, you can take money from any market card. Yeah, yeah, we might as well. Yeah, we might so as well we're... reset this real quick. So. Yeah. The deck's getting like a little weird. But yeah, it's, it's but all right. It's we'll okay. figure it out. It's yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so let's say the market looked like this and I wanted to take the tax action. The tax action, uh, cards of the tax action have a number of coins on them. So we'll just use these two as an example. Put those over here. Actually, here, you've already got one. There you go. I got one. you. We're good. So this is a strength one tax action, a strength two tax action. Uh, you basically take that many coins. And the places you're allowed to take them from are market cards. So if you use a strength two, you could just pull these $2 right off. That's completely fine. Now, note, if you... Uh, put money on cards and then took that money off, you still can't buy that card this turn because you put money on the card, even if it's not there anymore. Um, that's just referring to the purchasing rule. Understood. Um, the other place you can take money is from other players. <laughs> you, have to rule a lo you have to rule a location that they have a card in. So, for example, if Jess had a card in the Punjab and I ruled the Punjab, she is eligible to be taxed. Or... This would be a better example. Yeah, that would be better. Since, since I'm ruling really, the, the Transcaspian, I could use a tax action. Even a tax action on this cobble card, it doesn't matter. The actions are always independent of the location on the card. So this is, I could take a single coin from Jess, which I will demand right now for the sake of example. <laughs> um, and if Jess didn't want me to take her cards, what she could do, I'm just going to shuffle these over to Jess. Um, she has something called a tax shelter, and the tax shelter is the number of economic stars on her tableau. Th these are, each star protects one rupee from taxation. So at this point, she has three stars of tax shelter. She is protecting all three of her remaining rupees. I can't get them. If I want to get them, I have to find a way to eliminate her tax shelter. Okay, that's the tax action. All right, uh, the middle actions are really easy. So gift, you pay two, four, or six to purchase your first, second, or third gift. You can buy them in any order. doesn't matter. So uh, if you're flush with cash, you, maybe yeah, you can pay you, for the six and first. You, and you probably, like, the, 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 the sixth gift gift is one that get, usually gets bought first if players are, not, are highly liquid. Um, when you buy that gift, you just take your cylinder, you put it on the gift. And know that if you do change loyalty, you're going to lose that gift. And cylinders always remove left to right. Yep, always from left to right. And that, that gift will help you towards your uh, alternate victory condition, too. Um, okay, cool. So that's the gift action. Uh, the march action says for each rank, move one spy or army. So this, this action has three variants, uh, which is indicated by just the number of flags. So here's a, another example. So you see the, a strength one, a rank one march action, and then a rank two march action. Uh, each flag that's on a march action when you take it gives you one move. And when you make a move, you can move an army across a friendly road. So this is a one move. Note. You can't turn an army into a, uh, a road just that was for the example. Yeah, just, just for the example. <laughs> um, so, for example, if I wanted to move these two armies here, that is two moves. Okay. Um, th so things don't move together. So, like, and, and in that way, not like root. So you could have done something like one, two. Yeah, completely. Okay. Uh, the other thing you can do with your march action is you can move spies. So when you move spies, and actually I think it's technically called the move action, but I'm going to use those terms <laughs> interchangeably. Um, so when you take your moves, you can also move cards on tableaus. So uh, here, overall overview, let me just, sh yeah, this is actually, this is fine. Okay. So all of our tableaus are connected in a big ring. And so the left side of my tableau is connected to the right side of Edward's tableau. So this end of your card is connected to this end because mm -hmm. it's one big circle around the board, around all five of us. Yep. Like so, right? Yep. So my left side here would be connected to the right side of Jess's, et cetera. Yep. Yep. Just like that. Now, 
Um, when you take a move, it works basically the same way as an army moving. Each flag allows you to move one spy, either one card clockwise or counterclockwise. And that's how you move around the board. Cool. With your spies. Okay, that's the march action. Easy. Um, we got two actions left, and then we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, okay, so the betray action. Uh, you can spend two coins, again, spent to the market, uh, to discard a card where you have a spy. Um, now, the spy is lost, along with all of the spies that are on the card when that discarding happens. Uh, but, but this is still the way that you kind of get rid of your opponent's cards. Now, when you do uh, discard a card, so here, I'm going to put a spy on Edward's card. Uh, so here's that poor Alexander. I want to take the assassination action. So I would pay to the market, and then I could assassinate this card. Now, I have the option at this point of just discarding this card, or I can take it as a loyalty prize. Now, when you take it as a loyalty prize, and actually, for the sake of example, I'm going to imagine that Edward is the one taking the assassination action. Like Perfuriana, you can Strong kill man. your own cards. So let's say Edward is going to assassinate I'm Alexander. gonna assassinate All right, Alexander. so we both lose our spies on them. They're, so they they're go gone. back onto our tableau. Yeah. Then Edward has the option of either discarding the card or taking it as a prize. If he takes it as a prize, he flips the card and then tucks it behind his loyalty dial. Oh, there that, you go. okay, that's changed yeah, yeah. a little bit. And so you, so and I, yeah, and I'd flip the card, it doesn't really matter. Okay, fine. Um, and now, that is a, that's a, an Afghan, a green influence point, which would force him to change loyalty. And then now he has two influence points. Now, the thing that is, the reason why we're kind of putting this all in a pile is because whenever you change your loyalty, you kind of have to like pick up that stack and any cards in it, those are all gonna get lost. The gifts are gonna fall off. It's gonna be a big mess, but it's okay because you're creating a big mess. Okay, so that's the Betray action. So right now I would have two, but I changed my loyalty over to the Afghans because it had the uh, prize. Yep. Right. That's there you absolutely go. right. Got it. All right. Okay. Yeah, and there are going to be times when I'm going to call the betray action the assassinate action. Don't. It's the same it's thing. It's the same thing. Okay. So the last action is the battle action. So the way the battle action works is you pick a single site. That site could be a location on the board, or it could be a card in the tableau, or whatever. When you pick the location, you get to choose a defender, and then you do a, you're going to battle them. Now, the way it works is the strength of the battle is uh, the number of explosions on the card. So this is a strength one battle. There's a strength two battle. There are no strength three battles. Um, and you do basically that many hits, uh, with the caveat that you can't do more hits than you have armies. So if I had this card and I was working... Uh, for the Russian coalition, I can't do two hits because I only have one army there. Uh, but if I were working for the Afghans, I'd be able to do two hits. Those hits can be used to remove anything that's in that location, which means another army. You could also remove a road. You know, you, you can you can sort of divide out the hits however you want. Can you divide it between factions? Yes, you can take yeah. any any enemy pieces, uh, and you can also get rid of tribes that way. Now, okay, cool. I'll talk about the tribe removal in a second. Um, battles work the same way on tableau cards. So let's say if, we're, if I'm battling over here, I could use a strength one battle to remove Edward's spy. And if you had a strength two battle, it wouldn't matter because you only have one piece on yep. the card. And the key thing here is whereas moves can be divided among many sites, battles always happen in a single, single site. Uh, okay, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else that needs to be talked about. Uh, right. So, okay, so just a few small points and then we're kind of ready to go. Uh, there's a very, very critical rule in this game. So when Drew and I were working on the development of this game, we did our best to strip out a lot of the chrome and try to get the game right to its like central drama. But there were a few chromey rules that we just couldn't get rid of. Uh, and one of those is called the overthrow rule. So in general, the cards on your tableaus and the cards on, on the map, they do not... Uh, interact. It doesn't matter that you have a bunch of armies on your tableau, all those armies might be dead and gone. However, the overthrow rule basically states that if you lose your last tribe in an area on the board, you have to get rid of all your political cards associated with that area. <gasps> and that rule works the other way. If you lose your last political card of that area, the dynasty is dead, and you have to lose all your tribes on that area. So just know that 
the tribes are tied in a way that they're a lot more responsive. And if you, if you, there are different ways of, of cutting off the head of the snake. Uh, okay, so that's, that's the overthrow rule. It's really, really, really important. And we have the reminder on the player aid, and I wrote like, uh, that rule is written like four times in the rule book just so people don't miss it. Um, Always a good idea to yeah. reiterate rules in a rule book. <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially certain kinds of rules. Right. Um, okay, so the other thing that everybody needs to know is about bonus actions. So I remember when I said there's a suit that's always favored. Yes. If you take actions on cards belonging to that suit, they don't count against your two actions. So we are currently in purple. If we're in purple, then basically Edward, he's, he can do whatever he wants with his two actions. But if he uses this card and takes the betray action, doesn't mess with his with his action. So I still have two actions on top of taking anything there. Yep, yep, that's right. Now, uh, a couple little notes about the, let's see, where's I gonna go with that? Right, okay, so uh, one, okay, so the, there's a weird thing about card anatomy that I didn't mention, which I'm gonna bring back here. Certain cards have special powers in those little boxes. They're often persistent powers that break the rules in one way or another. They do exactly what you think they would do. If the card's on your tableau, you get the cool power. That's it. Um, and, okay, sweet. So I think there are two small things and then we're, and we're good. All right, go So uh, keep, it on your, keep it on your tableau. Uh, if another player has the most spies on a card, they essentially rule the card in the same way that you can rule location. That card is said to be hostage and a player can only use that card if they pay the hostage holder a ransom. The ransom works just like the tribes in the game. So for instance, I've got two spies on the company weapons. If Edward wants to use either of those actions, he's gotta pay me. And how much would I have to pay you? Cole? You'd have to pay me two because that's the number of spies that I have on the card. Even though I have one, mine does not reduce it. Correct, yep. He's gonna to wanna to start cleaning those enemy spies out. Now, uh, Another general, a general rule when you're using cards to take actions, every card can only be used for one action per turn. So even though the company weapons has two actions on it, Edward can only take one action or the other action each turn. What if they're free? What if we are currently it's in still, red? It's still one action per card per turn. Okay, like so I could choose roll. to do one of these for free and then do two actions somewhere else. Yep, that's it. Roger that. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, last thing I'll just note about these event cards, because since we happen to have one sitting out here. So event cards have two elements to them. The bottom part of the event card is triggered when the event is bought. Um, and then if the event card doesn't get bought, nobody wants it, and it gets discarded off the end of the market, uh, because they're auto discard at the end of your turn if they're in the zero column, then the top text happens. So in this case, if someone buys this card, good job, they got the backing of the Persian aristocracy, they get three coins from the bank. But if nobody caters to the Persian aristocracy and this card falls off the market, then all uh, armies and tribes in Persia get removed from the game. So just, you know, you want to make them happy. Easy all right. Enough. That is everything outside of the last stage of setup. One clarification. You sure. said those fall off at the end of the round. Mm -hmm. Nothing else does, correct? Nothing else does. Correct. So we only fill in and convey to the left any gaps from cards bought, mm -hmm. right? Yep. All right.